All right, welcome to first grade. This is the first day of first grade, um, two weeks late. So here we are, starting fresh, and welcome to first grade. Uh, I have to adjust myself to looking at myself on the screen rather than looking at all the smiling faces around the classroom, but I'll just imagine all your smiling faces um, or frowning faces sometimes, depending on how you're feeling, uh, from, from your various places where you live. And we will set up a Zoom meeting at some point so that we can actually see each other live and in person. Well, you know, we're pretty close. So, um, but for now I'm going to tape these lessons and we'll just go right in. So, welcome so much to the first day of first grade. Uh, I want to mention first that it's Koto's birthday very recently. Koto is one of our class members. I think probably all of you know her already. Um, but Koto turned seven uh, the two weeks ago, I think it was, when we were supposed to have the first day of first grade. And now here we are two weeks in, and she's now seven years old in two weeks, unless I've got it wrong by one week. So happy birthday, Koto! Um, the, the very next thing I like to do in the morning is, is call attendance. And in, in school, we call attendance like this at, at, in my classroom. I say, I sing it. First grade, are you here? And your response is, yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Will you try it with me? First grade, are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Good morning, first grade. So glad that you are all here. It is just lovely to be your teacher. I feel so lucky, and I hope we have a great year. So each day we start out the day with the morning verse, and the morning verse is just one way to greet the day. You know, people have been greeting the day by honoring the new day, the new, the sun, the sunrise and the sunshine since the beginning of human beings. Since ancient, ancient times, people have honored the sun with their new day. And I have a book all about that that I'd love to share with you sometime. But for now, I'll just say the morning verse, and when you start understanding how it goes, then you say it with me. So, but today you are here for the first time, probably. And I just go like this. I raise my arms up to greet the sun in the sky and say, the sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The soul with spirit power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, may love to work and learn. From thee come light and love. To thee rise love and thanks. So here we are, starting the day off right with the morning verse. The next thing I like to do is something a little bit uh, kind of fun where we, it's called the Body Geography Song, and I can sing it in English, and I can sing part of it in Hawaiian for now, and then we'll build on to it later. So you probably know this one, it's called Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes. So when I say head, you touch your head, ready? You can stand up for this, and I think that would be more fun than sitting there listening to it without doing anything. So here we go. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Let's do it again. Head, shoulders, knees, oops, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes, and ears, and mouth, and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Kind of changed the melody that time, didn't I, a little bit? Okay, in Hawaiian it goes like this. po o po o hi vi ku li va vai po o po o hi vi ku li va vai po o po o hi vi ku li va vai he malama ko kino So I'll do that again. Learned that from Uncle Tony five, six years ago. 
po o po o he be coolly va va po o po o he be coolly va va po o po o he be coolly va va hey malama kokino and there's more of that and i can't wait to relearn it and teach it to you please sing along when you once you know it now i'm going to say a poem which is also kind of funny and it's about a crooked a lot of crooked stuff so it goes like this. Well, first we get the rhythm with our hands. Ready, go. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a very crooked house. So you might be wondering what a sixpence is, and what a style is, and I'll tell you. A sixpence is a kind of a coin from a faraway place, and a style is an old-fashioned word for a certain kind of fence. Can you imagine a crooked cat? And what does a crooked mouse look like? Here we go. We'll say it two more times, right through. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a very crooked house. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a very crooked house. I love that one. Um, the next thing we're going to do is to count to 100. A lot of you already know how to count to 10, and many of you know how to count to 20, and some of you know how to keep on going and going and going. And many of you make a few mistakes on the way up, here and there. So we'll count to 100 together. I will start it and you will join in, I hope and then we'll get used to counting by it to 100, and then I'll give a challenge to those of you who already know how to count to 100 to continue on up. And later we'll learn all kinds of different ways of counting to 100, and counting backwards and all kinds of stuff. So here we go. It starts with counting to 100 though, doesn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's just keep going. I have another game to play in a minute. What comes after 10? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. There we go. Challenge problem. You can just start right over again and count to 200 by just putting the word 100 in front of each number. So you'd say 101, 102, 103, 104, 
five, and just keep on going. And when you get to 199, you say 200. And you can keep on going after that, of course, which is kind of fun. But it gets really tiring counting to 1,000 like that, so we'll, turn into, we'll, we'll make a shorter way of counting to 1,000 someday by counting by tens or fives and different things like that. All right, so uh, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to ask you about the assignment that I gave some of you. And when uh, the rest of you come into school, I will give you the assignment and the paper and the crayons that you need. So the assignment is to draw a picture in the first page of your main lesson book, a picture of three things, a person, a house, and a tree. You can put anything else in the drawing that you want, but be sure to include a person, a house, and a tree. See if you can do it with no reminders. If you get confused, you can ask your caregiver, what was I supposed to draw again? But caregivers, don't remind them without being asked. Just let them do whatever they do. So again, anything else in the drawing you want, but at least a person, a house, and a tree. And that stays in your main lesson book. And anything else that goes in your main lesson book, the only things that go in your main lesson book are things that I tell you as your teacher to put in your main lesson book. But your other notebooks and drawing books that you might have around the house, uh, those, of course, you can draw whatever you want. And I hope you do. I hope you draw every single day. Um, or paint, or make a sculpture, or do something every day. Those are the, what they call the fine arts. And there's the performing arts. I hope you also, every day, sing or dance or play some music or um, anything like that as well because it's just fun. The other assignment that the whole school got was a writing assignment to write about something that you did last summer and what I want you to do is draw a picture of something you did last summer. It could be just actually what I, what I said before was think of something that you know a lot about or something you remember really well and draw a picture of it and then write about it. Even if you don't know all your letters, you can just make it up, guess, pretend, or get some help even. It'd be more fun if you can do it on your own because that's, that's great, but if it feels too hard, then you can ask for help. But yeah, I think you can make it up. Just like I gave the example when the children were here in the classroom they, when they visited, I said, you know, I don't know how to write Chinese, but I kind of know what Chinese writing looks like, so I could kind of just pretend I know how to write Chinese, and I could draw my picture of what I did last summer on the blackboard, and then I could write in some other language that I don't really know, and just tell you that that's what I think it says is, I like to take care of my dog and play with my dog. I love to feed my dog, and his name is, Hoku, or whatever your dog's name is. Um, so obviously your drawing does not have to be of a dog. It's getting a little confusing now. So your writing assignment is to draw a picture on a blank piece of paper of anything that you know a lot about and, um, and then uh, write about it in whatever way you like. All right. The first day of first grade, we always do a lesson on the board, and it's called the straight line and the curve. And if you look around the world, you'll see that everything all around the world that you can see is made up of straight lines and curves. Like right behind me here, I've got a straight line right here. I, do you see some other straight lines? Maybe down this way. I've also got a curve. I've got this is just gently curved, this is gently curved, this is for sure a curve. And when you look at leaves and grass and trees and flowers, you all see lots and lots of curves and some straight lines too. So if you can draw a good straight line, control a line really well, curve a straight, a curved line really, really perfectly or nicely um, or precisely, then you can draw anything in the whole world. So we're going to start with that. I'm going to draw, I'm going to take my chalk and I'm going to face my board here. I'm going to get just the right distance away from it. I'm not going to go too fast, but I'm also not going to go too slow. I have to do just right, like Goldilocks, just right. That helps me draw the, the most straight line I can. So here we go. Wish me luck. It's not easy to draw a perfectly straight line, even though it seems like it might be. 
All right, I'm going to concentrate. Here we go. That's pretty straight, I'd say. A tiny bit crooked. You can tell a machine didn't make it. You can tell I made it. And I'm human. I'm not a machine. So it's not going to be exact, is it? But I'm going to try to make another one. This is even harder. I'm going to try to make another one just like it. Pretty close. Pretty close. I think the second one's actually even a little straighter. I think that one, this first one, leans just a tiny bit that way. Now, the even trickier, I'm going to make another one. I'm going to try to make it the same distance apart. You can try this later, okay? This is, I think it's better just to watch now, unless you've already started. I don't really mind. But um, I'm going to make a third one now. I'm going to try to make it the same distance that I made those two. So I'm going to just guess it's about right there. I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to say, okay, here we go. The same length, the same distance away, and as straight as I can manage. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good enough. My best effort. Here we go. Okay, there. That one, yeah, that one worked out pretty well too. Now, this part's even harder. Now I'm gonna try to draw my curve. I'm gonna bring this a little closer. All right. So a curve, is a little harder to control. I'm never quite happy with the curve I, every time I do it. It's a little flat over here. I think it curves a little more down here than it does over there, but it's pretty close. It's good enough. Now, the hard part is drawing another one. So, here we go. I'm trying to make the same kind of curve, start in the same place, go the same. <sighs> Never satisfied. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to keep trying because it's okay. Good enough. It's amazing how hard it is to do something that sounds so easy. It's hard to do it just right. Oh, and I look at that, I can see that this one is way curvier than that one. With my last one, I'm gonna try to fix it. I'm trying to make it closer to this one. See how this one doesn't curve nearly as much? This one goes right, right, right around. There we go. Right That's closer to the first one. I kind of like that one the best, I think. Well, so here's an assignment for you. Try to draw, how about 10 straight lines and 10 curved lines on a piece of paper with no lines on it. And just as a practice, not in the main lesson book, in, on some other piece of paper. Draw them nice and, you know, Draw them bigger than you, don't draw little tiny ones. Draw, you know, pretty decent sized ones that take up most of a page. Not the entire page, you know, start somewhere a little bit down and end your line before the bottom of the page. So a straight line and a curve practice. And we'll get much more complicated as the weeks go on with our practice with controlling uh, lines on the paper. Okay, so, the last thing I have for you today is a story. And this is a story that goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a girl. She was just a young little girl and she was very, very poor. Not only did she have no money, but she did not even have a family. She lived by herself and when things got even worse, she finally did not even have a place to live anymore. And so she just walked away from the town where she lived, where everyone was very poor, but she was about the poorest one. 
having no family to take care of her, and no food and no money. So she didn't know what else to do with herself, and so she just walked away. She left. And she walked away from the town, and it was winter. It was cold. And someone had given her a piece of bread because they had felt sorry for her and saw that she was in need of food. So she had her little piece of bread and she was walking away from the town and she came across an old man who was crying out and begging for, for food because he also was very hungry. And although she was hungry herself, she felt sorry for the old man and she gave him her bread. And he thanked her. And she kept on walking. And although she was cold and hungry and didn't know where to go, she was not sad. She felt comfortable. She felt at home in the world. And she could see the beauty all around her of the trees and the forest as she came closer to the forest. And she also had a, a warmth in her heart. She felt nice that she had given the food to the old man who needed it. And she didn't mind that she was hungry because it felt so good to help someone who needed help. Well, she walked along and walked along and she, soon she found, saw a girl who was without a jacket. And she was shivering from cold and she asked the other girl if she had any extra clothes that she could have because she was so cold. And the girl took off her hood and shawl, cloak, and gave it to the little girl who thanked her. And now the little girl was colder than before, but she kept on walking and she still felt so happy. She smiled to herself thinking, wow, I feel so nice to give something to someone else who needs it. And she walked along a little further, and sure enough, she saw another little child who was crying from the cold. She right away took off her jacket and wrapped it around the little boy who was huddled up against a tree trunk, trying to pull leaves next to him to warm himself. And then she walked on, and finally she saw another little girl. And this little girl did not have hardly any clothes on, only some rags that she was still wearing. Her clothes were all tattered and torn. And the little girl took off her dress. It was nighttime, it was dark, there was nobody around. She was alone. And she took off her dress and gave it to the little girl. And then just walked along into the forest by herself. And she was cold, but it was so beautiful. Trees were beautiful. And she looked up at the branches of the trees and it was nighttime now. And the branches were dark against the sky. And she looked up and she saw all those branches and she saw beyond the branches to the stars. And she looked up and she had never seen such bright stars. The stars, the whole sky seemed to be alive with twinkling stars, just full of the brightest stars she'd ever seen in her life. And it gave her such a feeling of just love and gratitude. She just looked up, wow, so beautiful. The stars seemed to be speaking almost as they twinkled. And then the strangest thing happened, a miracle. Some of the stars seemed to be falling slowly toward her, twinkling and falling down to her. She looked up with wide eyes and a bright smile and saw them and reached out to catch the stars as they landed close and tiny all into her arms. And she looked down and what did she see? But all the stars had transformed into gold and silver coins. Her arms were full. She opened up her undershirt and put the gold coins in her shirt and as many as she could carry she could bring back. And she walked back to the town and she was never cold, never hungry again, and lived happily to 
the end of her days, always watching out for and caring for others who needed some help. So it was, and so it is, and so it shall be. Thank you for being here today for this main lesson. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully with all the technology glitches figured out, and um, we'll see you tomorrow at 9.